Japan's nuclear agency has confirmed that sustained nuclear fission did not take place last week at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says it cannot rule out the possibility that a temporary state of criticality occurred recently in the number two reactor. Criticality is when nuclear fission occurs continuously. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency disclosed the results of expert studies on a report by Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO. The utility detected a small amount of a radioactive material, xenon-135, in the containment vessel of the damaged number two reactor last Tuesday. TEPCO initially feared it was a sign of an ongoing nuclear reaction, but it determined that the substance was produced by spontaneous fission and not from sustained fission or criticality. Spontaneous fission is a form of radioactive decay. The nuclear agency said the density of the xenon proves that criticality did not occur. The density did not change when boric acid was injected into the reactor. The agency ordered TEPCO to check the density of the nuclear substances in the vessels regularly and report any changes. The cabinet office parliamentary secretary, Yasuhiro Sonoda, said on Monday, it is regrettable that TEPCO was slow to report the incident to local governments. He called on the utility to share information as quickly as possible. This is the craziest thing, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen right now. The March earthquake and tsunami left behind far more debris than local municipalities could handle on their own. Tokyo became the first prefecture outside the quake-hit area to offer help in disposing of the rubble. Authorities began work to bury debris from one of the affected cities about 500 kilometers away. Tokyo began accepting shipments from Miyako last week. The rubble is being broken to pieces or incinerated. Workers transferred ash from a local incinerator to a landfill site in Tokyo Port where it's being buried. Other municipalities are reluctant to help, fearing the rubble could be contaminated with radioactive material. There is no cause for concern, as we're accepting and disposing of the debris only after conducting radiation checks in detail. I believe we can safely carry out our work. Tokyo Metropolitan Government officials say they plan to accept up to 500,000 tons of debris from disaster hit areas by March 2014. Environment Ministry researchers are trying to figure out how much radiation is lingering in the towns and villages around Japan's damaged nuclear plant. They started a detailed survey on Monday. The information they collect will enable government authorities to draw up decontamination plans for the contaminated 20-kilometer zone surrounding Fukushima Daiichi. Evacuation zones with radiation levels of about 20 millisieverts per year will also be included in the survey. Some 30 people gathered on Monday at a monitoring point in Itate Village that's located in a designated evacuation zone. Tokyo Electric Power Company employees are working alongside government officials. They recorded radiation levels at 100 meter intervals using unmanned helicopters that fly 50 meters above the ground and cars equipped with measuring devices. Nearly 100,000 people have been forced to evacuate. With that in mind, we'd like to do all we can to press ahead with the decontamination plan so evacuees can return home sooner. False. Environment Ministry researchers will provide an interim report on the results in December. Workers are expected to use the radiation surveys to plan their full-scale cleanup efforts, which is set to begin in January. A doctor says the physical development of children in Fukushima Prefecture may be affected by the lack of outdoor activity due to the nuclear plant accident. Shintaro Kikuchi tracked the weight of 245 children aged 4 to 6 in two kindergartens in Koryama City, about 60 kilometers from the plant. The results show an average weight gain of 0.81 kilograms over the year through June. The figure for children in the same age group in the previous year was 3.1 kilograms. Children in one of the kindergartens used to get one and a half hours of outdoor activity per day, but have been allowed to play only indoors after the accident. 
The smaller weight gain could be related to reduced appetites due to lack of exercise, as well as changes in secretion of growth hormones due to stress. The children may not be getting enough protein to develop their muscles. Kyushi said the decrease may be temporary, but that more checks are needed to prevent children's stunted growth. A new survey has revealed that one quarter of evacuees from areas near the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have no intention of returning home. Researchers from Fukushima University sent questionnaires in September to households in eight municipalities near the power plant. More than 13,500 people responded. 26.9 percent of all evacuees said they won't be returning to their hometowns. That figure rose to over 50 percent among people in their early 30s or younger. And nearly one-third of evacuees from the 20-kilometer no-entry zone said they won't go home. When asked about their biggest concern, nearly 60 percent cited a lack of prospects for ending their time in evacuation. When I think about my children's future, I can't return home. The government hasn't told us exactly when decontamination work will finish. It's clear from the evacuees' comments that they want to return home. Officials need to come up with steps to satisfy their wishes. U.S. environmental authorities have begun monitoring debris from the tsunami. The move is to ensure safe sailing in the Pacific Ocean and to come up with ways to protect shorelines. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency will begin issuing monthly bulletins on the location and scale of the debris. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration will assist in the effort. The agency says the Japanese and U.S. governments must be prepared to take action if the debris starts to pose navigational hazards or washes up on shore. Japan's National Institute for Environmental Studies estimates about 3 million tons of tsunami debris is drifting in the Pacific. Computer models developed by the University of Hawaii show some of the debris may already have reached 900 kilometers west of the Midway Islands in the northern Pacific. That's more than 3,000 kilometers from Japan. The models predict that the debris could reach Hawaii by next March. Scientists in Japan and the U.S. are warning the flotsam could cause serious damage to both the ecosystem and tourism. Thanks for joining us. Do they have control of the situation at the site? No. It's still a ticking time bomb. Realize that after the big Sumatra tsunami, mm -hmm. uh, 90 days after, three months after that, there was a huge aftershock. If they have another aftershock, and they're not in cold shutdown yet till next year, the accident could start all over again. It's like hanging by your fingernails. Yeah, it's stable, but you're hanging by your fingernails. Americans think this crisis is over, or that some even think that maybe it's solved or it's contained. It's, it's not. We're, what's happening right now? In the last two weeks, everything we knew about that accident has been turned upside down. We were told three partial meltdowns, don't worry about it. Now we know it was 100% core melt in all three reactors. Radiation, minimal that was released. Now we know it was comparable to the radiation at Chernobyl. And as far as evacuation, yeah, 12 miles, that's it. You don't have to evacuate beyond 12 miles. Now they find hot spots, four hot spots outside the evacuation zone. 34,000 school children now have radiation badges when they go to Kindergartners school. Kindergartners with radiation badges. Down to four badges. years of age. Can you imagine that? Kindergarten kids with radiation badges going to school. So all the mythology of the accident has been turned upside down because utility has finally fessed up to how severe this accident really was. In your view, did they not know how bad it was or they knew and they didn't tell or they just were completely blown away by the scope of the disaster? I'm a physicist and we tried to reconstruct the accident in our computers given the feeble amount of information they gave us. We knew it was much more severe than they were saying because radiation was coming out left and right. So in other words, they lied to us. 
they knew how much radiation was coming out, they knew the danger, they knew how much core melting was taking place, but they tried to put a happy face on it. As a reporter, within hours of the earthquake and tsunami, within hours, not even a day, there were already statements from the company and from the International Atomic Energy uh, Association saying that there had been safe shutdown of all of the reactors. And we know, of course, in the end that that simply wasn't true. But from the very beginning, they were trying to tell us that this was a safe situation. Within hours of the accident, we now know it was like the Keystone Cops. People that are clueless, headless, just running around crazy, not knowing what to do. We can now reconstruct that accident minute by minute, hour by hour, and we can see this chaos that erupted in the leadership of the utility. What's happening to the people who are working there now? Well, as you know, workers are being sent in and they're getting, uh, you know, like a year's dose of radiation just within like 10 minutes at a time. At Chernobyl, 600,000 workers had to be mobilized, each one going in just for a few minutes, each one getting a medal from Gorbachev. This will be the 100-year cleanup. How, how long will it take to clean this up, in your view? 50 to 100 years. And we're not uh, there yet. We're not to the point of talking about the cleanup yet because they haven't stopped the reaction. It's, it's still happening. Cleanup hasn't even started yet. They're not in cold shutdown till next year. Cold shutdown is when boiling stops. Right. It's boiling water right there at the reactor, releasing radiation to the environment and releasing radiation into gigantic vats. How are they storing and disposing of this stuff? That's the killer because they have all these vats that are filling up now. They may have to dump it into the ocean again. At that point, the Chinese, the Koreans, the fishermen, they get up all in arms because there's so much damage that every time you put water in, it leaks right out again, highly radioactive, and it's filling up at the site now. So wh what do they do with it? Right now, they're just uh, w counting the number of gallons as they pile up, desperately trying to bring more vats in. But uh, once they saturate, they're going to have to dump. And well, at that point, it's another crisis. Let's talk about the radiation in the environment, in the atmosphere. We've been told that it would be measurable, but minuscule.